Hello, Briad, once again. Brian, how's it? <laughs> How'd it go? <laughs> Very good. Very good. Nice to see you. Um, today, uh, we, um, the topic that we had decided on was reincarnation, which I think is really quite a leap for a lot of people and um, something that um, you probably know a lot about. So um, just, just to start right at the top is that um, I do believe in reincarnation. I do believe life is finite and eternal and that um, this is not, this life that I'm living is not an end point. Um, I don't know what happens afterwards. I don't know where I go. I don't know, but I, I just don't believe that life just ends and that's it. So um, that's my personal belief mm -hmm. and uh, that resonates with me. Um, so um, what's, what would you, for somebody that's just exploring the idea of reincarnation, where would you start and what would be the, the main points uh, for you? Okay. Um, I would like to first start by quoting uh, one of the main spiritual inspirations for me um, from the Bhagavad Gita, mm -hmm. that anybody who's embarking on a spiritual path, no doubt will come across this idea that the soul is eternal and infinite. And eternal meaning it doesn't have okay. no an end. So then in this regard, the Bhagavad Gita says, that the embodied soul, um, as the embodied soul changes within this body from boyhood to youth to old age, similarly, the, body change, the soul enters into another body at the time of death and that a sober person is not bewildered by such a change. So the idea is, is that that there's a continuum and that the body is simply like a garment that one wears or it can even be it's compared to a vehicle the word uses yantra it means machine that this uh the body okay. is a machine and the soul is just the driver so now in our experience and our kind of we rely a lot on empiric science so we want to see some hard evidence <laughs> and there is actually a lot of evidence supporting this idea of um, the transmigration of the soul, meaning after death, then you can enter into another type of life in another body. And um, particularly of note is a doctor um, called uh, Dr. Ian Stevenson. For those who are interested, Ian Stevenson is I-A-N, Stevenson. And he's passed away already. And he was, uh, he studied a lot of quite extraordinary cases. He did studies for past life um, uh, remembrances. He did studies for, uh, yeah. he, he did, there was past life regression. I don't think he could, he performed them himself. And then also quite extraordinary cases. Um, just one moment, this door flung open and there's a lot of sound coming in. Everybody's crying today since the moon, the sun's come up. It's been one of those days. Uh, As it does. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so this Dr. Ian Stevenson, he, he studied about 3,000 cases, like in his 40, 50 okay. years of research. And, um, and he performed his, uh, his, his studies very meticulously. He really followed the scientific procedure very well. And... Um, yes. As far as I know, I don't really know much of his life before he started the study, but what I've heard was that initially he was actually not um, a subscriber to this idea of reincarnation and that he set out yeah. to actually disprove it. But in the course of events, he actually found evidence which proved himself to change his mind. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Fascinating. But, but don't quote me on this. Um, because I, I didn't have the time to fact check that. So you can check that out yourself and you can even let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> but okay. he did the, 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 the fact is he did do a lot of really cool studies and he showed that a lot of studies, he even published a book, I think, with about 200 case studies where, um, where there was children who remembered events of their past lives and that these events were all verifiable and also that there was no way that that child could have known that information. 
Yeah. And even, for example, there, there was no close proximity between that child and the place where those events happened in that person's um, claimed prior life. And also um, the evidence that they had was um, well, they were able to verify it. They had medical records in many cases, and even they had corresponding birthmarks. For example, um, one person that was um, in a previous life, he was killed by a shotgun. He opened his door and there was a guy there with a shawn of shotgun and he blasted him and he killed him like that. And this person took birth again and he remembered that event and he even pointed it out, the child. And he had birthmarks and the wounds, the birthmarks corresponded to the shotgun pellets of the autopsy report wow. of that person. So there's many such events where, especially birthmarks is one thing it seems, like a person gets shot somewhere and then they recall certain events that happened. It's even happened that one girl went and pointed where she's buried and where the murder weapon was buried. And she said, I was killed wow. by this person and this person did it and this is where the murder weapon is and this is where my body's buried. And then they actually yeah. found, and it was a, uh, uh, this is actually quite a famous one. I don't know if Dr. Ian Stevenson um, studied this particular one, but you can look at right. it. There's, there's many of these. I've seen that one. There. Yeah. I've seen that, yeah. Or even a boy that remembered in his past life being shot down um, by Japanese. Um, he was an airplane, he was a pilot, and he was shot down. Yes. And then, so there's many such cases that one can look into, and I think they're very conclusive. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah. So on the, is, did you want to keep going down that vein, or do you have some personal beliefs that you want to explore, or... Uh, where would you go to from here in regards to um, exploring reincarnation? Okay. I think it's a very powerful paradigm shift because it, it, accepting this notion that, that, that life is eternal and uh, as a soul, um, apart yes. from um, temporary life that we have here in this physical kind of form, it, it, it has a fundamental change in the way that you relate to reality because now everything that you're doing, it's not just about the here and now, it's not just about even the next five or 10 or 50 years until you die. It's actually this notion that whatever you're doing here is going to affect what your next destination will be. And now, which, which now brings up a whole lot, a lot of questions. What type of destinations are there that one could attain and how do I get there? And if I do what I'm doing now, what will my destination be then? So these are natural questions yeah. which arise. And the important question. Okay. And it also helps one to appreciate a little bit more the vastness of this material cosmos and how small we it's are it, inside of it. Yeah, it gives a lot more meaning to this life is just not about this life. Yes. It's part of a continued journey. And there is importance to what it is that is um is current for you the things that you're mm. learning right now are the mm. things that you're supposed to be learning right now in your journey and exactly. uh, you are exactly where you need to be exactly yeah and that's powerful okay. you're not an accident in fact you're a miracle in a sense you're a miracle the fact that you exist that's a miracle well reincarnation is a miracle yeah oh, what the... there we are hmm. i just lost you for a second i don't know why all right it turned little... off. It turned off for a second. Um, yeah, I, you know, once you're talking about a miracle, I don't think it's a miracle in a sense. I think it is a miracle. It, it, reincarnation is a miracle. It's if you believe in that and if you think that that's true, then that's definitely an example of a miracle. Yeah. Um, and that you know, just to reiterate uh, about miracles is that you know I do believe in miracles, and I don't have to look very far, um, other than you know this planet, but. You know, a really, really easy one and simple one is there's a fireball over there that, you know, we float around that is always, you know, a gazillion degrees and that it lasts for a really, really long time and uh, life comes from it. Um, so you know, I don't have to look very far that, you know, there's this continual fireball just over there that yeah. is, uh, you know, constantly you know, part of our, our experience. And we still yeah. take it for granted and we think we understand what it is, but we don't. And uh, so I don't have to look very far for there to be a miracle. Okay, so um, you were saying something about 
there are some destinations that you can achieve or go to or something like that. I, I um, enlighten me. I don't really have much information about that. Um, even within this planet, you know, there's various destinations that one could attain of various degrees or qualities of life. Um, there's millions of different species of life that one could inhabit and all these different bodies, they facilitate one to be able to realize certain desires to certain degrees. For example, if you spend your life sleeping a lot, then you, you're essentially cultivating that desire. That's your meditation. It's like, I want to sleep, sleep, sleep. So this human body is not really um, that well equipped to sleep for long periods of time. Um, when I was 18, 19 years old, I was um, suffering from severe acute depression and anxiety and sleep disorders and whatnot and heavily medicated. And the longest I was able to sleep in one stretch was 30 hours, which was quite something. Wow. Yeah, a whole day did not happen. So, wow. so now, but now if this is your desire, you're cultivating your desire by the things that you do, your actions, they, they're cultivating certain desires. And um, cultivate means you know, you're brewing them, you're brewing them, you're growing them, you're feeding them, they become stronger. So then in your next life, if you want to sleep, why don't you just get the body of a bear? And then the bear is actually very expert at sleeping. He can sleep four, five, six months at a time. He eats a lot, then you hibernate for six months. So then you can realize this desire for sleeping much better in the body of a bear. It's quite limited in the body of a human being. Similarly, if you want to like, you believe in a lot, your whole life is surfing or scuba diving or something like that, then better to have a body of a fish or some aquatic because that body is more suitable for realizing your desire for swimming. Okay. But the human form of life, is particularly potent for realizing one's eternal spiritual identity, which this opportunity is not really there in um, the animal species of life, animals and trees and uh, you know, plant life, animal life, aquatics. Um, the human form of life is particularly meant to realizing one's spiritual identity uh, because there's a specific type of intelligence which is inferred to us, which helps us to inquire into our very existence. You don't see self reflection yes so i think in that sense there are different destinations that you can attain um even beyond this planet there's also but i won't get into that too much because that might be quite far out for many people but this one can understand in this planet itself there's so many different options available for, in terms of bodies that you can um, inhabit like that sure. so, so you get what you desire according to what you do in this exactly. life, that's that's the choice you're making my, my personal belief in like, I love the contrast that we have different beliefs and I think there's room to have, you know, different beliefs in life. I personally think that if you're a human being that you reincarnate into human being again and that not necessarily into other species, I don't know that for sure. But that's my belief. Mm -hmm. um, I find anything that you have beliefs for other than that in the room for everybody's beliefs and for you to be able to feed out for yourself about what's true for you and uh, being able to create your own beliefs from mm. that. Okay, um, what else about reincarnation? Is there anything else um, that, like how does one know, uh, you know, what's, what's the use of reincarnation? Why is it important? Why would somebody um, even question, you know, whether they're, you know, reincarnated, uh, or that it's possible to be reincarnated? And anything else that you find that is impactful for you in, in the, um, covering the whole topic? In the whole topic. Well, essentially, um, the fact that there's reincarnation, on the one hand, it gives you an opportunity to pursue uh, so many desires that you could potentially have. Because um, this life is too short to pursue a lot of them, or even most of them. <laughs> because a lot of desires we have, they're also conflict. So many different lives could could give you those opportunities to realizing those desires. And on a grander spiritual scale, the, the function of that is also to bring one to the point of understanding that actually none of these desires 
are going to satisfy me. If I'm, if I accumulate, if I accumulate um, an incredible amount of knowledge, I'm still going to be left unsatisfied. If I accumulate an incredible amount of wealth, I'm still going to be unsatisfied. If I accumulate an incredible amount of power, of beauty, um, of even if I go the opposite, if I just become completely renounced, I become like a Zen Buddhist monk. Or, or something similar, living in the forest, just wearing tree bark around my waist and eating roots and fruits, and just being completely renounced and detached, that's also not going to make me satisfied. Minimalist. Minimalist. Yes. Yeah. So, then, so then we get a chance to try and pursue these different things and then realize that they're not going to make me happy. And one can either do it yourself or you can actually look at somebody who has attained that and you can, you can decide for yourself whether you think that person's happy. This person's such a genius. Um, I'm trying to become a smarty pants. So this person is so clever. He's, so, he's such a genius. Is he happy? No, he's not happy because he still doesn't want to die. He still doesn't, there's still a lot he doesn't know, from, just as an example. So then if this, these many lifetimes are supposed to accumulate in realization that these things are limited. They can't give me the satisfaction I desire. And therefore, what will give me that satisfaction? And this, these kind of things pressure an individual soul to start inquiring into the nature of the, the true self, the spiritual reality. So these things act as a very powerful impetus where you get to express your free will any way you want to. You also get to take the consequences of your actions. That's also part of freedom, is that you also have the freedom to accept responsibility for what you do. So that's, that's how you learn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A lot of people, they want, they want, um, they want to receive things but nobody, everybody's talking about what are my rights, but nobody's talking about what is my duty, what is my responsibility. So my data just ran out, so there might be a problem now. We'll just try and uh, reconnect the call.